so my screen is visible, right? Mm. Okay. So uh, yes, uh, your screen is visible. Okay. Uh, let's start. So yeah, I'll be talking about IoT and deep learning. So uh, so let's uh, take a tour of uh, what uh, deep learning is and uh, a ba basic intro to what uh, we have been seeing so far. So uh, the story goes like this, uh, and I, I call it a story because it's a fascinating story of how machine learning actually has evolved over the years. Uh, so uh, if if you if you had, uh, so what is deep learning? Deep learning is basically uh, a model uh, using neural networks. So neural networks are uh, are computational models uh, inspired by biological neurons, uh, neural uh, networks that we have in our brains. So our brains is a is a network of uh, neurons uh, which uh, has uh, which passes information from our you know sensory organs to the brain and does the computation and uh, gives uh, it back again to the our motor organs. Uh, so uh, this neurons is a pathway in which signals flows and it gets modified. And uh, that's how you, we, we do all our tasks. We, we uh, learn new things, we forget things, and everything happens because of these neural networks. Uh, and similarly, in, in computation or in machine learning, uh, neural networks are inspired from these neurons. Where it's an intensive network of neurons. And when we use uh, different layers of this kind of neural, net, uh, you know, neural network model, then it's deep learning. Uh, and and why it has become popular over the years. So if if you talk about early, so neural networks in you know com, in a computational sense uh, was discovered in 1990s, but it it gained popularity towards 2008 because uh, by 2008 we had enough computation power uh, uh, in terms of GPU as well as we have enough data uh, because of the internet uh, to train uh, deep neural networks. So when, when people started new networks, we started breaking all the known benchmark in machine learning. So you can see that for speech, uh, you know, and image classification, uh, the you know, so the already existing models were uh, like there was huge improvement over existing models uh, by you know neural networks. Okay, so so uh, what is deep learning and uh, why it is you know, better than other methods? So that that is the question that we will answer. So deep learning means using a neural network with several uh, nodes between uh, inputs and output. Uh, this series of layers between input and output uh, is used for feature, feature like you use for feature identification. Suppose you give an image to the uh, in a network, the network extract different uh, you know uh, feature out of it, and based on which it, it predicts something. Where it predicts, uh, for example, a driverless car uh, can uh, you know uh, identify pedestrian. It can identify other cars. It can identify road sign based on uh, this kind of features. Uh, so this is how a neural network looks like. So it's kind of uh, each, uh, there's a neurons. Uh, these black dots are neurons and the green dots are uh, other neurons and they're in interconnected. So oh, this interconnection are the weights. Uh, these are pathways and through which signal flows. And uh, these pathways has weights on which, which the signals are modified. And these weights are something which are learned by the neural networks given the data. So given a task, suppose you are given the neural network task to identify image, uh, it will uh, pass that image and it will train in such a manner the weights uh, will adjust uh, to make the right predictions uh, from this. So there are many algorithms that have been de developed over the years for this kind of neural networks. Uh, then there can be, you know, uh, so uh, we can we can talk about, you know, how neural networks uh, weights are learned, uh, you know, there, there are weights of unsupervised uh, feature learning and, you know, uh, the breakthrough, you know, the simple trick or uh, for training, you know, uh, deep learning networks. So uh, this is how uh, a simple neural networks looks like. So if you look at uh, it, it is basically a bunch of numerical inputs. Uh, then there are some weights, and basically there is a function. So it's basically what it does is basically it takes all the suppose these weights are uh, these numerical values. It, it's weight. It, it, it uh, multiplies this value with each of the weights, and then sums up, and then uh, finally uh, it gives some output. Uh, so and then it passes through a function which looks which goes from zero to one, and there's a nonlinear function which transforms these uh, values uh, between zero to one. Okay, so uh, this is how a neural network looks like. So uh, and and there can be multi. So uh, we can make it a more complex by adding more layers to it. So there can be different inputs, and then uh, there are two classes. Classes are how the you know, uh, network 
outputs. So the black dots are the input and the output neurons, and the, the, the intermediate layers, the green dots, are called the hidden la uh, layers. The more number of hidden layers, the complex the neural network becomes, the more uh, feature it can extract, uh, and the more kind of you know powerful it becomes. Uh, and it obviously comes at a cost of more computation power and more requirement for data. So, uh, you know, so uh, we kind of uh, give uh, this kind of training patterns and uh, we kind of give uh, this kind of, you know, output that we predict whether which class is it, uh, you know, it, 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 yeah. so, and this kind of, you know, uh, it, 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 it kind of uh, updates the weights uh, based on this prediction. Suppose like it predicts 0.8 and uh, it has to go to zero. So there will be an error of eight at the start with. So it will, it will modify these weights uh, so that, that uh, you know, output goes to zero. So it will do for all the training samples and this will repeat it for millions and billions of you know uh, training samples that are there and uh, to kind of uh, connect uh, to kind of make the right weights so uh, uh, so not let's talk about what what we mean by classification suppose like you you have to identify this uh, you know the, this is the very basic problem of uh, machine learning so what what we want to do is we want to do we want to separate a particular you know points based on their features so uh, so uh, these are the you know yellow points and the blue points and what we want to do we want to draw a line which separates not exactly a line but a curve uh, to kind of separate these two and uh, now initially you have a curve which is which is very much noisy it, it doesn't it doesn't it can't separate it very accurately and over time it will learn uh, and it it will try it will build it such a way that it can you know predict it can it can actually fly, you know uh, segregate the points so this is how what uh, the problem of machine learning is uh, you know so these weights are you know uh, learned by the neural network so they, they the weight doesn't mean anything it means only with respect to the problem that you know the weights have meaning uh, you know uh, so they are they they, uh, they 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 kind of the weights are formed by making tiny tiny adjustments. Uh, uh, so one one uh, you know slight uh, refer reference that I need to give that I forgot uh, is that these slides have been taken from Intel uh, open source uh, page and I've taken the uh, different slides from uh, 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 uh video lectures. Those are the most standard slides that I found. And uh, another point that I, I wanted to make is that all the you know opinions that are made in this uh, session uh, are completely my opinion uh, and they doesn't refer to any of my uh, uh, organization that I work for uh, that I've ever worked for. Uh, so yeah, that, that's uh, that I wanted to forward at the start of the session. So yeah, so uh, coming back to the point that uh, that so how exactly a neural network is trained uh, so that it, it is just not any random weights that is learning. Okay, so uh, so basically, uh, you know, so suppose like this, this, this is the problem that we want to segregate this point. So we, we have a function to learn, uh, which basically segregate this point. And uh, then, you know, this uh, uh, neural network, what it does is that it tries to approximate this function, which will end up segregating this point. So uh, then look at, let's look at a very, very you know, useful example. Suppose like you have this pixel of the images and each pixel represents some handwritten digits, so zeros, ones, and this kind of handwritten digits. And basically what you will do, will pass each of these pixels uh, to the neural networks and the neural network has to output that which, uh, which digit is it? Is it zero, one, two, three, two, nine, right? So uh, this kind of, so uh, each of the neuron, what, what it is doing is basically in encoding some feature, it's encode, taking some pixel values and it, it, it is basically reasoning that if the pixel value is this, then this should be the, you know, class. So, uh, and, and there are so many connections and based on this connection, it's taking the decision. So uh, basically this hidden layer. So if you look at this kind of a, you know, a pixel, what the hidden layers does is that it, it learns the weights to, it learns the ways to focus on particular pixel uh, to extract particular features so that it can, you know, uh, predict particular, you know, classes. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so like, uh, now, now there is no way, you know, to find out what feature uh, will, will be actually the NN extract. It is up to the NN to extract the feature. And that's why it is a very innovative model in terms of it doesn't rely on human uh, to give the features. It looks at the data and it can figure out the feature by itself. And that is the, one of the innovative things and one of the you know, uh, good things about neural networks. It doesn't have to depend on the features, uh, which is give, which you don't have to sit with the data and figure out what are the features looks like. But instead, if you pass it to an NN, uh, it can, uh, it can you know, figure out what features will be useful. Okay, so uh, you can look at that. So basically, uh, in case of this handwritten example, what it is doing is basically looking at the strokes, looking at different angles of the you know handwritten digits, and it's trying to figure out that if there's a curve, then probably it might be two, three, or six. 
if there is a line straight line can be one seven or nine so in this way it is trying to figure out this trying to reason that given this pixel given this you know features uh, what should be the actual uh, you know uh, value or actual uh, class of it so that's how the neural network is learning on its own and this is the beauty of the neural networks uh, okay so uh, you can look at this so this kind of you know uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, uh, features are basically extracted by the neural network so you can look at that it is detecting different lines detecting different curves so uh, in in a joint fashion if you take all the you know uh, all the um, layers into consideration it is basically drawing different lines and trying to figure out what are the pixel means so uh, so uh, this uh, you know so this is how our brain works and, and uh, saying that this is basically derived from how our brain works so our brain has this kind of different layers uh, through which you know so uh, so uh, there can be different kinds of layer in which the optical nerve flows and uh, we we recognize images we have uh, on our retina we we basically receive pixels uh, and these optical signals are passed by layer by layer uh, to our brain and the, this optical layers basically extract the features and pass it to the brain and brain basically uh, uses the signal to take different kinds of decisions it identify people it takes decision it you can catch a ball it can actually detect and and the speed and measure everything based on this kind of uh, layers and this how uh, you know uh, this why why having multiple kinds of layers in a neural network makes sense because each neurons will then be capable of extracting very different kinds of features and it can it can uh, you know uh, model something very very complex in itself so all these tasks that i'm talking about identifying recognizing the image are very very complex tasks and our brain have millions of layers uh, in it so uh, it is not a surprise that we need multiple layers in neural networks to kind of you know uh, to kind of make these predictions uh, but the problem is that uh, you know with uh, uh but the problem is that with with multiple layers it becomes competitionally challenging all the traditional uh, algorithms to train the uh, neural networks doesn't work very well so uh, then then we the theory of deep learning was you know uh, discovered so basically what it does is that it trains uh, the layers each layers at a time and, and in this way uh, it, it it goes on in 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 training the neural networks uh, so uh, so basically uh, this is a auto encoder model uh, auto encoder model basically has a constriction or has a uh, so if you look at the input and the output uh, have the same shape uh, inside there is a fine shape basically it is uh, going from a very high dimension space to a very low dimension space and projecting back to the high dimension so this can be used for feature extraction and projecting to lower dimension if you want to reduce the dimension of your data auto encoder models are your you know uh, are something which you can should rely on so basically what you want to do is you want to train layer by layer and sample by sample so uh, so basically the, uh, the the basic idea then is that uh, there are different types of deep learning and what uh, what we want to do is that uh, we want to use uh, we, have, we have developed different kind of algorithm to train this kind of a network and these this kind of deep learning models are used for different kinds of tasks uh, so now uh, if i kind of uh, come come to the you know uh, theory of internet of things uh, so so now now let's let's pause for a minute so we have this uh deep learning uh which uh, which basically are neural networks uh you know used for different kinds of task and uh, and then uh, we have uh, we we now are kind of in in a in a in a computational situation which is which is uh, which is standing in between uh in this kind of scenario that we have to our devices are becoming smart so uh smart devices need some kind of machine learning prediction so if you want Uh, your home to be a smart home it needs to predict a lot of things you need to predict what is the energy requirement that you need uh, you need to uh, what is the heat thing you need uh, what is the you know when you use your dishwasher and all these things it has to predict it has to predict when to mop the floor and everything right so uh, the main problem uh, here is that you need very very smart building blocks for building a smart uh, uh, iot device so internet of things basically are uh, devices working through internets uh, connected through internets and wh why why do we need our devices to be connected to the internet uh, so the basic fundamentals of I I internet of things lies in that uh, in the word smart that we want our devices to be smart and how can our devices be smart uh, they can only be smart if they're connected and if they're connected and there is a central unit which controls this then it can be smart so the device is, your mobile phone will not become smart by itself itself it has become a smartphone because there are lots of thing it can do it can take picture it can 
uh, you know it can it can record it can play music it can browse the internet and all of things uh, has come into a smartphone has built has been built into a smartphone by connecting everything to internet so we do call via you know internet right now we do voice over ip we do video calls uh, and which we are not thought about you know 5 years back or you know, 10 years back we are not thought about such kind of technologies which we have now and now right now we have this device called smartphone and what we have uh, you know found out is that we can connect all our devices we can connect our car and in fact people are connecting their cars uh, uh, to their devices they are connecting their home to their devices uh, and and all of these things are kind of so you come to home you, you say that alexa play this music or you know you you, you talk about you know uh, maybe you know uh, some uh, you, you you ask your ac you know you command your ac to kind of uh, uh, get you know uh, lower the temperature or increase the temperature you 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 ask for more heating or uh, you you may you know you may have a you know coffee uh, machine which uh, which will you know uh, uh, just uh, brew different flavors of coffee at your command so you uh, for all of this your uh, internet uh, your device has to be smart it has to first of all detect uh, do all of this prediction uh, has to be equipped with different kinds of technology it has to be equipped with vision image image recognition so if you want your security system so we have been working uh, in you know on for personal project i have been working uh, in, in a security device which will home based security device which will try to you know identify you know uh, the people that are coming to your home uh, and and can assist them in different ways so for that you have to have a, a, a doorbell uh, which has a camera inbuilt and the camera can detect this kind of images and how can it detect the images the only way to detect these images is that the camera has a good uh, image processing system and now if i if i if i uh, go back and say that what is the state of the art image processing system it is based on out of deep learning deep learning is giving you the state of the art uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 the, uh, image recognition system or face recognition system and now if you want your camera or your home security device to take care of that then you have to build deep learning into that iot device now the, there is one problem so what what we what we have so so, so far seen is deep learning model is asking for more and more computationally challenging you know models so we we have seen just now that to build a more complex task we need a more complex model which means more computation which means more uh, different kinds of algorithms and all these things now but iot device always comes with limited amount of memory a limited amount of computation power then how can we uh, fit deep learning into iot device because uh, if we want to our iot device uh, to become smarter of course it has to depend on deep learning and how can it be dependent on deep learning when the ask of deep learning is more and more complex or more, more and more computationally intensive uh, models uh, so so we will kind of uh, look into that so uh, so it's like uh, so uh, first let's look at what kind of smart things we we kind of encounter in our daily life we look at smart watches which is uh, which takes care of your fitness uh, we look at smart how home and you know city uh, which have optimal energy consumptions which will uh, you know cater to all of your needs at your command of your voice command or it will it will protect your house from different kinds of you know uh, become kind of different kind of threats and all these things and there are smart industries which will make uh, you know automation faster cheaper as well as it will make uh, you know processor much much faster and then there is driving we have we are mo moving into the age of autonomous driving where you will be probably you know leaning back your car enjoying the views where your car will take you from one destination to another and that is that, that is the future that future that we are we are talking about uh, and and we only can move into that feature if you uh, if you if you if you can build uh, very you know uh, smart devices uh, which are uh, and for building smart devices again we have to come back to this deep learning right so now uh, kind of uh, just a uh, few set of definition the building blocks of iot's are you know the processing unit so we it has so uh, now now look at this this slide this has exactly the opposite thing uh, that deep learning was talking about so it is that it has it needs ultra low power to high performance it means scalability to security you know security solutions uh, it requires full range of sensors uh, you know connectivity uh, and then the power consumption should be less and also the computation consumption processing power should be less so but deep learning the first thing deep learning uh, wanted was more and more computation power the first uh, problem is first uh, you know the first bar here uh, is not uh, not you know the deep learning needs a much more computation power so how can we resolve that problem uh, so kind of uh, let's let's see how 
deep learning or machine learning and arti like artificial intelligence have been working in in sync with this kind of smart devices so uh, face and voice recognition uh, we are using in different kinds of smart devices when we alexa or any kind of device to use uh, you know use voice recognition use autonomous drive, driving you need vision computer vision you need also face uh, and recognition you need you know voice recognition the car understands your voice what you are talking about speech recognition uh, it needs stock so stock market trading right uh, it needs kind of algorithms which understand uh, what how the radiation works Or the sentiment of the you know market and all these things. So uh, if there's a, you know with COVID uh, and all these things, people are building smart devices which can detect your diseases and uh, and then uh, symptom detection. This also relied on some feature detections. For example, I was talking to one of the doctors uh, about a skin uh, pretty uh, like a, a, a kind of. Um, Uh, a model that can uh, look at your skin and tells uh, tells you you know so there's a new zealand company which has been working on this kind of you know models which looks at the skin and kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, predict whether you have what is the you know probability of uh, you having cancer uh, based on your skin uh, disease or something like that so we are talking about like for those kind of things you need extremely powerful camera you need extremely powerful uh, models to to capture information from the camera and then to make the prediction and also you need data so you need deep learning as well as embedded into this kind of model but the only power that you have is your is your phone which has a limited uh, camera which has so much megapixels of camera or so much you know uh, so much capability to capture the image uh when a doctor you know diagnoses a person uh, they look at from a very close angle they can uh, change lighting and all these things but if you are you know taking photos with a smartphone you are restricted in in getting that information and now deep learning or any kind of machine learning is also restricted because that is a you know feature input that you have then i know you have to have predictive maintenance for you know different kinds of grids and all these things are coming up that uh, you know grids uh, and all these things are becoming more and more uh, you know uh, electrical grids uh, telecommunication networks are becoming self aware are becoming self uh, you know healing networks we're talking about self healing network where uh, any kind of fault in your network can be taken care of by the network to uh, to actually bypass and and pass you know not you know not interrupt the power sources or telecommunication sources to you it can heal heal itself a uh, handwriting recognition so we are talking about banks uh, which are automated where you know you write some checks you sign it it detects that sign and it 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 does whatever it needs to do from that uh, so social media uh, you know so uh, you, you kind of uh, want to you know uh, want your social media to be automated uh, uh people are doing different kinds of social media stuffs so where they want to automate some contents they want to post at regular intervals and all these things require some sense of you know machine learning and a kind of you know iot devices right uh, for example like you want to you know post so there there are options in your uh, smart watch today where it can sense update or share uh, with your friends at how many you know miles you ran or something like that uh, and then of course that the credit cards are you know uh you know uh, continuously being upgraded to having more easier use for example right now you can swipe uh, you don't have to swipe your card you have to touch your card to do all the transactions uh, some of the banks in india uh, are giving cards uh, which you can just touch uh, on the device and you can transfer money uh, but at the same time the risk of fraudulent transactions comes at a very high risk so now you have to be very careful where your card card was swapped where was there a usual usual location where the card is swapped or something like that and you have to go the you know make a transaction forward or not forward based on that so all this so this device so the credit card which is like a one chip has to take all this decision has to make all the communication uh, in that that you know uh, 10 seconds 20 seconds in which you know the uh, the supermarket person is holding your card uh, and so i'm trying to swipe it just take the decision and stop a fraudulent transaction then and there uh, and this requires it has to it, it has to you know make uh, either connect to the internet or it has to take some decision local now the problem comes is that suppose your credit card is suppose what will happen suppose the bank promises that i will give you a credit card which is extremely safe and extremely ease of using so uh, what you can do is that it, it will detect uh, if you are at a merchant place it will detect automatically this that this is your card and at the same time it will it will uh, you know credit that card uh, uh, or it will sorry it will debit that card 
uh, based on the transaction. But at the same time, I'll, I'll also protect that card that it is not, you know, uh, you know, it, it is not, it is protected from any kind of fraudulent transactions. Now, uh, when you're, you're at a merchant place, you're predict, you know, uh, buying something, the card uh, has to make that communication uh, to the internet and try to figure out whether it is a fraudulent transaction. Or not. And suppose it is in, in an area where it is not, uh, not very well internet connected, then your card will, will become just useless, right? So uh, then you have to you have to make it extremely reliable, uh, and 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 the way to do it, and then uh, then uh, people will talk about that. Can we make a lot of decision in the chip of the card? Can we can we attach a small device in the card which can take this decision of whether it's fraudulent or not, or uh, what was you know? So maybe it it, it kinds of is connected to your mobile, which tracks your uh, you know uh, location and sees that whether the location between you and your card is very, very different. And then it can easily say that it's a fraudulent transaction if your card uh, is, and your distance is very, very high. So if someone has stolen the cards and taken and uh, doing some transaction elsewhere, it, it will immediately detect. And it doesn't have to detect uh, based on you know uh, any kind of internet communications, right? So uh, so usually this internet communication things, we have to be very, you know, uh, we, have to be, uh, we have to kind of come up with areas where uh, we have to solve the problem either on the chip, on the device, or we will solve it by a combination of the internet. So if you are planning to do with, a, suppose your model resides on some internet, and uh, now uh, now you can uh, communicate from the device to that model and kinds of, you know, uh, take the decision that is one way, another way is that you make the decision on the, on the, on the, on the device itself. So that the drawbacks to that, and we will talk about that in some time. Uh, so, uh, so this like how you know uh, again like uh, the deep learning part of you know IoT that you know that uh, this is you know brain uh, and and then there is uh, deep learning which is basically based out of these neural networks and we are talking about how we can embed uh, these neural networks into into IoT devices. Uh, so uh, and look at this kind of cat you know this kind of neural network convolution in the neural network model which are very much you know useful uh, for detecting images uh, or for classifying images. So there are yeah, models, deep learning models, which can take care of an image, it takes the image and it can do commentary based on that. It can give uh, labels uh, or it can assign, uh, you know, a subtitle based on that. So we have seen uh, captioning of images or captioning or even, you know, subtitling of uh, movies uh, based on, you know, this kind of uh, deep learning model. So, uh, so, uh, so basically uh, we, are, we are kind of uh, going into uh, a, a era uh, where you know, uh, so we are connecting so many devices together, uh, and uh, and and these are the uh, these are the so what is stopping us in in doing that? So uh, the stopping uh, is that you know uh, one is the bandwidth. So what is the bandwidth of, of our devices? The latency. You, it cannot happen that you are using a device which has like fifty seconds or uh, you know maybe five minutes delay. You will not use that device. Uh, availability. So uh, we are talking about you know uh, we are we are dependent on uh, this kind of three uh, G, four G, and, and now five G technologies which will pass your signal. So all this communication. There's a, there's one on one hand there's a computational gap. There's an on another another hand is communication challenge. And then there is another uh, you know area where you have to improve your prediction. So uh, this kind of uh, like uh, the AI needs to be very very well integrated with all of these things to make uh, the system run smoothly. So uh, if if you have if you are expecting an AI model, so suppose like uh, uh, like if if you are kind of uh, you know uh, if you are kind of uh, uh, talking about uh, you know, talking about a model which is sitting on your on your cloud service and your internal device will call that service and try to you know make some prediction then the bandwidth have to be there for it for example there are like millions of cameras there which are basically taking this kind of you know images and making inference and if the bandwidth is not there the model will not be able to do it and then there's a latency part. It cannot be, you know, data cannot be delayed uh, to the device because there can be a different harm that can happen to the device if the data is delayed. And then uh, there is uh, the signal availability. Your device has to be built with signal uh, availability for which uh, the required for the communication of the AI technologies, which uh, you, are, you, are, you are making some very, you are passing some very uh, high, uh, so the AI models requires very complex features and you are passing that feature and that requires very high latency, right? So, uh, so like uh, here, here uh, you know how, how people are doing is is that uh, we have this edge computing framework uh, which basically has these uh, nodes and then there is a so you think about this as the you know uh, where the, the there is processing there is connectivity there is security and then sen sen uh, you know sensor and actu actuation happening and the sensor data is being passed away by gateway so there's gateways kind of 
are the communication networks built to the uh, actually you know the models in the in your cloud so uh, this is the framework where your uh, models are sitting on the cloud uh, and your devices are connected to those models through gateways gateways are where the communication is happening so your device is capturing the feature uh, it is processing the feature doing some you know basic processing and passing by the gateways to the clouds and now as a as a you know iot device uh, engineer uh, who is implementing deep learning here to figure out what is the optimal feature computation or you know uh, optimal feature processing that you have to do on the device so that it can be passed with minimum latency and also without uh, making any kind of uh, degradation of the feature you cannot you cannot pre process and in, in terms of latency reduction you cannot uh, reduce the quality of the feature then your deep learning model will not work well so you have to pass on as much as information as possible with minimum latency and also you have to pass it uh, you have to make necessary adjustment at different so you know hops so that you, you can end up uh, making a good prediction so your your iot device has to capture the right data and then pre process and send a compressed amount of data uh, through gateways to the to the cloud and uh, and get the prediction back and and it has to do in such a way that it is not uh, losing any information in, in in that so and also you have to worry about other things that there should there should not be any privacy breach uh, the connectivity is available the bandwidth is available and it, it is real time there is no latency involved right and the power consumption should not be very high because you are your iot device is supposed to be working on some battery or is stand alone devices or maybe work you know uh, taking some power consumption and if you have to charge it repeatedly it is kind of inconvenience and uh, as i was saying that you have to make the sorted data you have to filter the data and pre process the data in the on the edge computing itself you have to do this you know, everything on this edge either you have to process it on the on the device or you have to process it on some gateways and even distribute it across some some part on the device some part on the gateways so that your latency also reduces and your you don't you know lose too much on the prediction stuff so uh, uh so like this is this is some of the modules uh the, so this like st so stm the new solutions which is like uh which which has uh, this kind of uh, uh you know deep learning model uh, built into it and it has this uh, it it guarantees high performance it it mainstream it is low power and it's wireless uh you know and, and there are other you know uh, so the ai application basically uh, you know requires that uh, it requires a, a sensor and it 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 requires different kinds of uh, uh the, the the kind of uh, more kind of requirements come when you are you know processing uh you know tracking or you know image data so speech object detection or sensors and all these things are still uh, lower uh, you know lower kind of uh, uh, lower lower uh, you know bandwidth uh, data but if you look at these images they takes up a lot of bandwidth bandwidth and if you are doing live tracking then 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 then, then you have to need, need a lot more computation power so uh, now now there is you know uh, so what what uh, so, uh, so how 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 do you build this neural network you, you collect the data and then you uh, define the networks and then you Uh, build a network so this all is possible different kinds of uh, networks so keras tensor flow uh, right now there is uh, there is also pytorch uh, uh, which you can use and then you can uh, make the pre trained uh, neural network model so so basically to to have the iot device you need a model which is already trained and that is sitting somewhere in the cloud and basically on from the device uh, you will call that uh, application that, that api and you will get the uh, you know uh, decision so uh, this is what happening so training uh, happens uh, in, in offline fa fashion and uh, then you kind of convert to the framework on which this kind of uh, so this this uh, by this you know so stm3 so different framework like we'll talk about intel uh, which has a different framework in which you have to convert so that uh, the the iot device is capable of uh, coming and and querying this api okay so uh, so uh, like we can do this kind of activity uh, you know uh, detection where uh, you are you are uh, you are wearing a smart watch and it is kind of detecting different kinds of activity and basically it is passing to the cloud and it is saying there is low activity how it is compared to a previous day what is your heart rate whether you are facing any issues suppose you are detecting that cardiac uh, you know uh, cardiac uh, you know uh, fluctuations and uh, you are probably calling an ambulance if your cardiac pressure is too much so Uh, those kind of features can be built into a smartwatch, uh, which can be you know, revolutionary in terms of you know uh, helping people uh, you know, you know diagnosing faster and um, helping them to reach hospital faster. So all these things can be built in into the watch. And then then there can be you know devices where which are like uh, you know where which can receive this kind of voices command, and uh, the neural network will will try to uh, you know 
first uh, tune to whatever voice you are speaking and learn over time whatever you know uh, whatever your preferences are what your voice modulation is uh, whether you kind of uh, so suppose like you 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 have a trigger word so usually this kind of device uh, works on a trigger word so amazon and alexa you have to say that alexa uh, and that will uh, turn on the device and the device have this neural network or or some kind of model uh, machine learning model sitting somewhere uh, for other you know uh, platform like you know there is uh, siri and all these things they, are, they have some machine learning model or some neural networks sitting somewhere uh, which uh, which will be called and it will it will give the prediction uh, based on that so now uh, uh, so uh, basically like uh, you can pass on to you know uh, different so basically you can have uh, uh, character recognition basically you can you have a touch screen and one on which you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, write something and based on that it can detect it and it can uh, pre, you know uh, so suppose like you are doing a bank signature and basically your portal and and you can use, do your signature and the it passes to the bank uh, frame uh, cloud uh, device uh, where you know it it recognizes the signature and you passes uh, it lets you you know do some transaction or something so those kind of be you know done uh, by this kind of iot devices so uh, there there can be food classification and all these things uh, uh, which can you know so that was like uh, it so uh, um, it can you know it can uh, take images and it can uh, classify what, what kind of food it is so it basically depends on whatever model you are uh, try, trying to build and then you are converting to the to the model type which the iot device can uh, query and then you are uh, using the iot devices uh, okay so uh, uh, intel intel has its own uh, framework of uh, iot devices uh, which is called intel edge uh, so like uh, so it is approximately 2 billion 200 billion dollars uh, in industry uh, and uh, uh, so uh, basically how what how intel uh, device performs is like there's a physical devices and as i said it's same same as the sn uh, t32 that we were talking about uh, it has a connectivity and then there's edge computing which is the same uh, framework which does the processing and are uh, basically uh, connectivity to the you know uh, to the application which is sitting on the cloud uh, and basically you have this cloud computing which has all this uh, framework built into it using different kinds of neural network and uh, uh, so how how to make this kind of iot system is basically uh, uh, you have this iot sensors uh, which are built for different kinds of you know tasks uh, and uh, now what you can do is that you can uh, take this kind of you know models and uh, you can you can detect this kind of input uh, features and then you can pass the sensor through gateways uh, to the to the cloud and then uh, you can at uh, the cloud it can you know the processing can happen on the cloud uh, api and it can pass down to the iot device where you know the the uh, application the, the kind of uh, inference happens or something uh, is done by the iot device so uh, the the ask in this kind of thing is that we we have bigger data to be passed the sensor can capture more and more data we can have better hardware uh, which uh, which is cheap at the same time is cost effective at the same time which can which can give you you know more 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 and more performance and we have deep learning based smarter algorithms uh, which are which are uh, which can be you know incorporated here uh, so uh, so now you know uh, so like uh, if, if we move a bit ahead uh, so you know uh, so the end to end workflow kind of looks like this uh, so i'll kind of uh, is this uh, so that uh, so you have this data acquisition and then you do a data aggregation data curation and you build the model model performance model validation and you have this model uh, you know running on some s3 uh, and basically then you have this sensor networks which basically uh, query this and then you have this pipeline which all, this also generates some network and then uh, generate some data and it, it gets passed to the model and the you know, the, the training happens and the you know, prediction happens uh, together so uh, okay so uh, so you know this kind of you know uh, things that uh, intel have uh, developed where uh, you can you can use uh, uh, you know use for stuff in you know, efficiency uh, you can you can use this uh, so you can see that uh, you know there are there are areas in the in a coal plants uh, where there are lots of people and then there are areas uh, which are hot spots and then there are green areas so you can redistribute things you can you can help them guide uh, guide it to the right equipment which are less utilized and all these things uh and there are, there are other you know techniques for fishery where you can find you know where uh, fishes are using different kinds of you know sensors uh and uh, you can do this kind of you know uh this kind of uh, uh car detection uh where you can you can analyze cctv you can see whether the cars are passing at a higher speed you can see whether someone is making some uh you know some uh, some illegal activities or not and you know uh, you know and can kind of uh, kind of alert the authority and all these things so 
so kind of uh, so this kind of uh, uh, the node flux uh, IO you can go to that this in a part uh, this is the Intel so uh, kind of uh, and and all these things are built on open source uh, technologies you can use Cafe you can use Theano you can use Spark and all these things you build your models make it uh, cloud computed and and distributed in nature and then you can uh, use this kind of uh, uh, in you know IoT based system to kind of uh, use this kind of API. And one, one of the things that I didn't talk about here is that uh, there, is, there is a new version which is called uh, of TensorFlow or uh, Google uh, TensorFlow Lite. Uh, you can actually build those systems on your mobile. You can actually, so those systems are you know, high performing neural networks which can be built in, in a smarter way for your devices and you can download those and make those system work on your devices. Suppose you're building an app which requires a face recognition system, then your apps requires an internet connection to query the cloud service to make a decision. Well, how about you pass a very, uh, you know, a, a very, you know, a less powerful model, but, uh, you know, less computation intensive model, you keep a version of it in the device so that you can give service to the user. It's kind of an offline map like in Google devices, right? So the map even works uh, with limited capacity, even when the internet is not. So, but you can keep a version of that inside and it can guide you, or it can some, do some performance. And those kind of models are also being you know, favored right now that you can actually build a less powerful, less computation intensive model, which doesn't, uh, which can give basic services to you uh, when the internet is not connected, but uh, as an internet standard, it can give, it can query the you know, cloud and give you more and more information uh, or more and more services. So uh, people are working with this kind of stuff as well. So yeah, so this kind of uh, I, I wrap up here. Uh, so this is all I had to cover in IoT using deep learning. So there is a very interesting area that has been going forward, and people are using different kinds of areas for predictive analysis. For example, energy trading is one of the area, or energy security is one of the area where a fault tolerance or predicting fault at a much larger scale, uh, and you are, you are kind of uh, making alternate paths of, uh, of you know, load uh, balancing uh, by predicting the faults and by making measure adjustment to the network. So all these things are coming up and we'll see more of those systems in, in coming years. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that's all from my side. Uh,